In the first episode of this series, Dave introduced us to his 1967 BSA A65 Thunderbolt and showed us the starting point for this low-budget classic motorcycle restoration project. Today, there's a few more jobs on the list to move the Everyday Bike project along. These videos are designed to give you an idea of just some of the work involved to put a bike like this back on the road. Of course, we always recommend you consult your owner's manual to check the details for your particular machine. Let's get on with it. Right, just going to bring you back up to speed where we are with this engine from last time. Uh, we've put the gearbox set back in. It's quite easy to put in. Uh, the detent is at the back. It all lines up properly. It's easy. When we come to put on the drive sprocket, I've left the old one on this pair of grips here. It's a little trick. Well, when you've got the bike in the frame and the chains on the sprocket, it's quite easy to hold the back wheel and to not let that sprocket turn. But when the engine's on the bench, you want to hold that sprocket and do the nut up tight. These are just uh, mole grips and it works quite well to actually clamp these. Get that nice and tight, I'm just showing you now. Now you, you'll see that we've got the nut there with the tab wash already bent over, but to show you how easy it is, with a box spanner, literally on the nut and you can get good leverage hold this because you're on the bottom part of the alley on the casing here but then you can get a really good pressure on this use a long tommy bar in your box spanner and pull that up really tight then you only need to just use one of the flats to bend over your tab washer rather than people what they tend to do it's Basically, if you haven't got one, they knock this around with a cold chisel, but you can't get that tight, and also you, you muller that nut. Just get all your screws back in finger tight first, and just wind them up so they come into the countersink. Because we've taken this cover off and put it back on, it already got some well seal on there because there's, there's no gasket behind there. We've just taken it off so we can show you the nut behind. When you come, you want a good screwdriver. These are quite old these screws. I've had to just face them off a little bit. But just tighten up and you don't want to over tighten, but a good screwdriver and just give them a good, good turn and go alternate sides. Because they go into a taper, so you just want to be nice and tight. Now the plate's back in place, we've just got to put on the main shaft clutch boss adapter. Um, just will show you, when I got this bike and we went through the bits and pieces, I did find that the original taper is quite badly worn out and it's where probably the nut was loose and it's moved about on the shaft. Now if I put that back over the keyway, it's a job to tell but it, it's not, a, it doesn't hold onto the taper. Now I've been lucky enough to find all the bits as new another clutch center and when that's back on the keyway that really is a good nice tight fit we can't put that on yet we haven't got that far but there has to be a thrust as well there's a thrust washer behind the back of the clutch but what we're going to do before we do this we're going to put our pistons on and get the barrels built back up then we put the clutch together for you but i just wanted to show you that always make sure that that isn't warm before you put it back on because if your nut was loose your centre nut on your clutch because it has a washer afterwards that goes on and if that was a little bit loose there's a good chance that key has been chattering in that centre and you might have found the whole clutch was wobbling about quite a bit so always check the condition of that um, clutch centre. I'm just going to make sure with people they know where they are with this. Now we know we stamped up 24 oversize, we got two sets of new rings we put the top ring in the bore here. It's so important to have the right clearance. There has to be clearance. There's got to be a ring gap. Now, this is actually marked up in the book. If I show you, it's got um, a fitted gap here. It's 0 0.007 to 0 0.012. That's 12 foul. Now I've got 12 foul here. If it's slightly over, it doesn't really matter. But that's, you've got to have the clearance, now that's 12 fell. We've got a ring gap here, and I'm just going to put the feeler gauge in that gap. Just a little bit grippy. 
Now that's quite serviceable. It's important to make sure that you have got the right rings. So always take a ring out of the packet, stick one in the bore and just measure it up. If you're in any uh, doubt about the size of your piston, go somewhere to an engineering firm and they'll measure your bore up. So you can do it with a vernier gauge. You can put your gauge into your bore and we can measure this up. And we're 75 mil bore. But it's slightly, I said it's oversized now, 20. So we've gone 74.11. But that will give you your reference, you'll be able to check in your book to see what size bore you are. If it was a lip in this bore before we honed it out and you were scoring, we wouldn't have messed about. We'd have gone from 20 to 40 fail. And we'd have gone for a new set of pistons oversized and got this bored out. Because I didn't have a lip and it was just like superficial scuffing, a little bit of a seizure, we just cleaned it up. And that's why we've got a way of new rings. We're not spending a lot on this as we've explained before, but there we are, we've got new ring in there, good gap. So we're gonna put the rings on the piston properly. Then we'll put the pistons on the rods and put the barrels back on for you. Start off with the bottom ring which is the oil control ring. These are cord rings. It has a, a device in the centre here. It stops the oil from coming past the ring. So we put this on first. This has got an expander in it, somewhere around here. I will show you, there we go, on the rail. So we just open it up on the rail. We slip that over, find the groove and close that back up. Now this ring, we're looking for a mark, top or bottom. This one is the same, but we'll check on those, you'll find that those will show you top. We just slide this over. There's a groove in the centre of this ring for that special device to sit in. Not quite there. There you go. That one's in. So that's the bottom ring, all control ring. Next we fit we need the second ring. Now when you get a packet, it does show you sometimes a reference. This shows you uh, like a, a groove of the piston. Well this one now shows you the second one. Always do it in order. Now on the ring, it's marked. There's a mark up here, top. It's so easy to grab a ring, stick it on, think I didn't check to see if it was top or bottom, but top. That's tapered normally, there's a taper. So we slip this on, you don't need to use oil. Slip it on, don't pull it up too far. That one's in. Top ring has another mark, it doesn't say top on this, but it has a little symbol. Just open that out. There you go. Now, someone said to me just now, the cameraman, about the piston. Some pistons on two strokes, you'll get a peg, this little pin, and you have to make sure that the ring gap comes where the peg is. On full stroke, you don't get that. The rings are allowed to move. The reason on a two-stroke they don't is because you have transfer ports. And if you used to look at the cylinder bore on a two-stroke, there'd be cutaways. And if that ring was to move round, it could end up with the gap running over an open window and that, that ring could get caught up and it would snap. And that's why you have a peg on a two-stroke so the ring can't rotate. Four-stroke, it's just a bore and the rings will move a little bit. They won't move very far. Right, we're ready to put the pistons, both of them, back on the rods. So what we need to do, just rather than, a lot of people are driving that gudgeon pin for cold. 
best to heat the piston up either with blow lamp just warm it up a little bit so you can push the gudgeon pin easily in easily or you boil up some water it's the motion piston in that just to expand the aluminium so the pin moves easily at the moment you see it's quite tight so we're just going to warm up need a lot of heat it's just to expand the aluminium a little bit just mind your hand you can do this obviously not holding it but it's easy this way I just want a little bit of heat around the skirt or the piston I'm doing both sides here because it's got to push through to the other side Just going to check that and see if we've got any movement. Yeah, it's moving easily. So we're just going to make sure we've got a little bit of lube in the top. Make sure the piston's around the right way. in now what we've got this side we've already got one circle clip in so you're able to push that in with your finger right in as far as it goes then we've got to put the other clip in that side but you see by heating it up it makes it nice and easy now if that was cold and you had to drift that in you can so easily damage something you've got this and you could bang it against one of the studs but by just pushing it in you know I think it's fine and it's gone straight through the bush, small end bush. So we're going to do the same with the other piston and put the, the other clips in at the end. We just need to give us a gentle tap just to finish it off. Yeah, when you come to do this job, you, you don't have to rush it, but you will lose that heat fairly quickly. So try and get it in as quick as you can, get it centered, get it in. If you have to tap it the last little bit like I had to there, it's not a problem. But don't forget, you've got to put your two circlips back in now. Okay, so we've, we've done one circlip, but we're gonna put this one in, to show people this one, this side. So like I said before, you need to use your, your thumbs here quite a bit. Get it in where the cutaway is in the bottom part of the piston. And you can get that first section in and sort of twist it. Get your nail underneath it, like I have there. And if you look, I'm just on the outside. I'm not in the groove yet. And carefully, with a screwdriver, a blunt screwdriver, just push it home. So just make sure, push it down into the groove. First one's in. You can see this is still hanging out. And just be careful you push it in. And let's just make sure it's home. And we just try and push it away from the, the groove. You have to lift up that part. And there we are. That's home. And just check all round. There we go. Just a little note, when you put that circlet back in, it's all a matter of feel really. So using your thumb, your thumbnail, you don't want it to ping out. You can use a screwdriver, don't use anything sharp really, not a good one. Use one that's a bit rounded off. What you don't want to do is slip across your piston, across the skirt on the outside and put a score mark down it. 
so really just be careful. I've just used this just to guide it in really to show you more than anything else because I managed to get it in and then just push it down in. If you was to mark inside where the um, circle is, that's not a problem, but you don't want to put any marks on that piston. Just be very careful. If any doubt, you say it as plastic maybe, but just you just need to push that in. Now that is what we call, you've got sir clips, and these are called snap rings. This, this is a snap ring. It doesn't have the little um, open eyelets on it, like a sir clip, when you use sir clip pliers. Those I do change quite regularly, but these snap rings, these are sprung still, and once they're in, they're in. They don't move, they won't come out. Sir clips, because they're squeezed quite a bit, they can slacken off, but these are okay to use again. I know people say you should replace them, but you know, it's all in good order, it's nice and round. Right, when we are doing anything like putting the pistons back on, the rods, putting the um, circlets back in the end, or snap rings as these are, always stuff a bit of rag in the bore, in the crankcase rather. And also when we put on our barrels as well, when we start it off, if anything drops, you don't want it going inside there. So it's just a little reference. Now, when we was just pushing in this little snap ring circlet, if by any chance you did slip and you put a mark into the piston, it's not the end of the world. Don't want to do it, but if it's just a score mark on the inside, just get some wet and dry and just go around with it. And if there's a mark on the piston here, you scratched it. Don't be too alarmed with it. Just rub it out go up and down, just take the high spots off, but you shouldn't be doing that. If you hold your screwdriver very close, you're only just using it literally just to push that in. You're not holding it back here. You're just holding it very short. It's just to give you a little aid just to push that in. 